welcome to the tutorial for the Chichester wrap dress by Sussex Seamstress. We're going to start by putting a stay stitch in this neckline because it's quite long and it sort of crosses the grain. It's very easy to distort it or stretch it so I'm just going to put a stitch line within the seam allowance on both fronts. It's definitely worth checking your pattern pieces next to your neckline once you've done your stay stitching just to make sure your pieces are still exactly the right size for you and there's no stretching. There we go, you can also use a strip of interfacing to secure them if you prefer. Next we're going to do the darts. So I've marked my dart point with a pin on the wrong side of the fabric and I've got notches here, tiny little notches so that I know where the dart starts. So I'm matching those notches, that's right sides inside, not always clear on this fabric. And then I'm folding my bodice, can I just change that pin direction? So I'm starting where those notches are and tapering off towards that pin at the end. Okay, a little back tack at the start of the dart and then taper, taper, taper off to nothing where that pin is. Never back tack the end of your dart, you'll get a point. You can reduce your stitch size as you approach the end if you want though. There we go, nicely tapered. Next I'm going to fold that dart downwards towards the waist and I'm just going to give it a little press. Okay, next I like to just line that dart up with the side seam and just pop a little stay stitch in there just because then when you come to do your side seams there's less fiddling. You can just treat it as one piece of fabric. There we go. Repeat for the other side. Now it's time for the facings. Now I've block cut these so I've applied interfacing to the fabric before I've cut out my facing so that I know they won't stretch they'll be true to the pattern you can see it had black interfacing on the back there I've marked my center back neck on that piece that back neck piece I'm going to pin these are the shoulder seams on my facing so the back neck facing to the front facings and I'm going to stitch a centimeter in as are all the, the seam allowances on this pattern. Here we go. Obviously the interfacing stabilises things and helps to keep it true but still be a little bit gentle while you're handling it so that you don't stretch or distort it. I'm going to press these seams open. And then I'm going to overlock around the outside edge to neaten it. You can zigzag it or finish it however you choose. And there we go, nice and neatened. Now we're going to do the waist starts on the back panel. There we go, back bodice. I've marked the points of my darts and there we go, the start of my darts with the notches. The points marked with a pin. I'm going to fold it again right side inside. So I'm stitching on the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to taper from the notches to the pin. You can always mark it with a pencil or chalk if you wish. There we go, starting at the wider end and working towards the point. That's it, two nicely tapered darts. I will give those a press and then we can move on. There we go, nicely pressed darts. Shoulder seams. So that's all our prep done. Now I'm going to place the back bodice right side uppermost and these front bodice panels right side down so you've got all your darts on the outsides and pin the shoulders together. This is one centimetre seam allowance as ever. It's 
stitch starting from your neckline towards your armholes and then I'm just going to overlock these together because it's such a light fabric it shouldn't be bulky so I will press them towards the back bodice there we go starting to look like a top Next, it's attaching the facing. So I'm going to lay my bodice out so it's nice and flat. I've got my centre back neck notch there that I've marked on my bodice and I've got the one that I marked on my facing. So I will pin those together and work my way out. The next point is the shoulder seams. Match those together. And the other shoulder seam. And then to pin the length of the facing to the front bodice neckline. Oh look, you can see no stretch there at all, which is perfect. I'm gonna pin down the length here the end. I'm going to start sewing from that point all the way along using my one centimetre seam allowance all the way around to that exact same point on the other side. Here we go. Back tack. Stitching carefully again trying not to stretch anything although it should be pretty stable with that interfacing now. Let's take these pins out and have a look. Right, so it's all looking good. No puckers or tucks. It's all nice and flat. So I'm just going to clip seam allowances here. This fabric's very thin and fine, so I'm not going to grade my seam. But if you're using a heavier weight fabric, you would want to, at this point, grade your facing seam and cut it down to a half. What I am going to do is clip into this gentle curve. My snips will be wider along the front and then when the curve becomes much more curvy I shall put my snips much closer together. Trim away that excess again. They're about a centimetre apart, slightly less than a half inch, I guess. And then further on, they're more like an inch and a half, three, four centimetres. So then I'm going to press that seam allowance over across to my facing. And I'm going to stitch on the edge here of my facing to hold that seam allowance down. So it will naturally form a lovely crisp edge for the neckline. There we go, so I'm pulling that seam allowance underneath towards the right side here because that side is my facing. So you can see there I'm stitching through the facing and all the seam allowance as I go and I'm like a millimetre away from that seam edge. There we go, look, you can see it clearly there. And if we fold that back Oh, it's almost doing it itself without a press. That's amazing. So I'm just going to fold that back and give it a press. Here we are. Lovely neat facing. That's lying nice and flat. No stretching to that front neck. And a nice crisp neckline. So next we're going to do the ties. I've pressed mine together, right sides innermost, and I'm going to stitch a centimetre in from the short edge and then pivot to go down the long edge. Here we go. Needle in, lift the foot, pivot round, and here we go down the long edge. 
leaving that other short edge open so you can turn it through. Little back tack. So I'm going to just chop this corner off and snip the seam allowances down a little bit. As I said before, this is very fine fabric, so it's not too bulky. If you're using something more bulky, you might want to grade your seam allowance by cutting one side down by half. Now, slightly fiddly with uh, funny old fingers. Here we go. I'm going to turn this through. There we are. Being careful not to make a hole in it, obviously. And then tease out these corners as much as possible. I might need a little pin just to pull out the very corner bits. Okay. And then just rolling that seam in your fingers. And then give it a press. There we are. One tie. Repeat for the other one. I'm going to make a button loop now. You could use a piece of elastic for this if you prefer. I've just got a piece of fabric here that's about two centimetres wide by 10, 15 centimetres long. Doesn't need to be that long, but it just means you've got a bit extra in case you make a mistake. Just stitching right on the raw edge there. And I'm going to use my Rulo Turner to turn it through. Now this fabric is lovely, but it's quite sticky. It likes to stick to itself, which makes it much easier to sew the bodice with, but really tricky to turn through. So I may be some time. There we go. In hindsight, do, making my loop with some bias a little bit of bias fabric would have made it turn through a little bit easier. But as it's my first time using this wax fabric, I uh, I went for this method. I'm just using a pin here just to tease that top bit, just to get it started. There you go. You can see once it got started, it was fine. But as I said before, if you don't fancy the fiddle, you can use a bit of elastic or a bit of ribbon or a bit of cord, whatever you've got in your sewing box. I'm going to give that a little press and then I'm ready to use it. OK, let's attach these ties now. So lay out your bodice as I have here. This is right side up. And these are my fronts, as you can see. So I'm pinning one tie to the side seam, leaving that centimetre seam allowance at the hem or at the waist. And on the other side, I'm going to pin the tie to this point. So let's grab a pin. I'm going to leave that centimetre seam allowance again at the waistline, at the bottom there. So lift it up a centimetre and pop a pin in. And then I'm going to pop a little pleat or a tuck in my tie so that that top finished edge of the tie meets a centimetre in that stitch line, that seam line. So when you turn it through, it should look nice and neat. There we go. So I'm just going to stay stitch these for now. I find it so much easier if you do all these fiddly bits first and then you can just treat the fabric as one piece rather than trying to balance your ties in there and finding they're moving about. There we go. They're all secured down. So that's the one at the side seam. And I've got that centimetre there. So when that is stitched to the skirt, the tie will rest nicely on the seam line and the same with the front. You can see I've got that centimetre left there so it fits nicely in. Once the skirt is on, I'm going to leave that bit free though, I only want to stitch 
There we go. Just showing you now. If you hold it like this, I'll show you how to bag it out. I'm going to fold that facing back over the front, encasing the tie. Match those front edges. And we're going to stitch down and stop again that centimetre before the waist hem. So nice back tack, stitch, back tack. So you've still got a centimetre free seam allowance at the waist to stitch the skirt to. Now try and get rid of some of this bulk. Uh, those scissors aren't big enough. Let's get the bigger scissors. Try and reduce it a little bit. Grade that seam and then turn it through. So there you go. You can see that's all nicely bagged out. That looks very nice. You've still got that centimetre at the waist. Right, let's put this button loop in. So we want the other, here we go, the centre front with the tie attached at the side seam. I've got my loop fabric here. You could be using your ribbon or your elastic. I'm going to pin it to this edge. Doesn't really matter where, as long as you've got that centimetre seam allowance at the waist still free. So I pin one part there and then I'm going to pick my button up and I'm going to use my fingernail to mark where the centimetre seam allowance is going to come. So then I hold my button down there flip my loop over. There we go, so I know my button will fit. Just slide it along there so it's not all on top of each other and pin it. And then I'm going to do my stay stitching a centimetre from the edge. There we go, let's check this button will fit in this loop doesn't need to be particularly snug because there will be some tension on it once it's fitted to you. There we go. Perfect. We know the button fits through so there'll be no fiddling. Now I'm going to fold this facing over again and we're going to bag out this corner. So I'm folding it over itself. I'm going to stitch down that stitch line again so I know that I'm not making my buttonhole smaller and I'm going to stop a centimetre before the waist hem. There we are. That's my centimetre seam allowance. Let's get rid of this excess loop. Trim some of these hairy bits away. Cut the corner off. Trim the seam and turn it through. There you go, one button loop. Obviously if you're using elastic you don't need to be quite so precise because it will have some stretch. Nice and neat. Side seams next. So we want to pin our side seams right sides together. Place that tie over so that it doesn't get caught up. Starting at the underarm, I'm going to pop a couple of pins in. Again, make sure your tie is well out of the way so it doesn't get all caught up in your seam. And we're going to stitch that using our centimetre seam allowance. Let's pin the other side quickly too at super duper speed. There we go. Back tack. Stitch from armhole to hem. Repeat for the other side. There we are, there's my side seam. I'm going to overlock those and then press them. I'm going to overlock them together. If you're using a thicker fabric, you might want to overlock them separately and press the seam open. I'm going to press that. There we go. Seams pressed towards the back bodice. Nice. Sleeve seams next. So remember you need a pair of sleeves. So these ones were cut out right sides together. So I'm going to 
open them up and fold the right sides inside. Then I know I've got a pair. I'm going to match up those underarm seams, pin and stitch the centimetre. Here we go. There we go, both underarm seams done. I'm going to overlock them. There we go. And then I'll turn it through and give it a press. I like to press my seams towards the back sleeve. The back sleeve is always denoted with a double notch, a double snip. There we go. One sleeve, repeat for the other. Let's put these sleeves in. There we go, I'm laying my bodice out, right sides outermost, and I've got my sleeve here, single notch for front, double notch for back, so I know that is the correct sleeve for that armhole, because when I pin it in, I will match the underarm seam. and pop a pin in to hold those together and then I look for notches there should be a single notch at the sleeve head which matches with the shoulder seam and we will move round to this part and we should have again notches that match yeah we've got a single notch and a single notch we know the sleeves in the right way around hooray so then it's just pinning and easing remembering that if you have any trouble with easing your sleeve heads in that's the big curvy bit at the top of the sleeve you can always pop a stay stitch in or a gathering stitch and just gently pull it up a little bit to ease help you ease that fabric in There we are, we're stitching a centimetre from the edge as always, starting from the underarm seam, stitching all around, gently easing any excess fabric in as we go. There we go, take these pins out. Let's have a look. We must check this before we overlock it to make sure there's no tucks or folds as we've gone around. Let's see how it looks first. Oh yes, that looks all right. I can't see any obvious tucks. So I will now turn it back through and overlock the inside of the armhole. There we go. Nice and neat. I just need to do that with the other sleeve and then we can move on to the skirt. Right, let's do these darts in the skirt now. This is my back skirt panel and it's wrong side uppermost. You can see I've marked the points with pins and again I've got notches at the top. That's my centre back notch as well so I know where the back needs to be when I attach it to the bodice. Pin these darts, again you can Mark them with a pencil or with chalk if you prefer. You can tack them first, whatever makes you feel most confident. Stitching from the waist to the point. Two darts, one each side. They should be the same length, tapered nicely. Give those a press. That's it, that's your back skirt darts done. side seams next. So that's my back skirt, right side up and this is my front skirt or one of my front skirts. Remember you've got a straight edge 
that you don't want to stitch, you want to stitch the curved side seam edge which has a notch in it which will make it clear to you which um, edge is the side seam rather than the front. There you go, look there's a little tiny notch there which is quite near the top near the waist. So right sides together, again not terribly clear on this fabric I'm sorry. Starting at the waist, pin down your side seams on both sides. Lots of fabric in this skirt. It's got a very good wrap on it so that you don't go showing anything you don't want to show. And then you want to stitch from the waist to the hem, centimetre in. If you're using a thicker fabric again, you might want to overlock these side seams first and press your seam open. But again, because this is a light fabric, I'm just going to do them together. So there we go. That's both our side seams stitched down from the waist to the hem. I'm going to overlock that edge. Nice and neat. And then I'm going to press both sides. I'm going to press that seam allowance towards the back panel. There we are, all pressed. That's seam allowance you can see, pressed towards the centre back. You can see how it wraps over. Okay, now we're going to do the skirt front edges. So the edges that lead from the waist vertically down to the hem. I'm going to fold these a centimetre in and then another centimetre. It might be helpful for you to press these before you stitch them. I'm going to do this both sides on both front skirt panels just to finish that edge nicely. And I'm stitching on the edge there. So here we are, nicely hemmed, give them a press, there we are, job done. Alright, it's time to put this bodice and skirt together. So I'm laying out my skirt as it would be if I was finished. There we go. So right wraps over left and then I'm going to put my bodice above it the same way. So I've got again that right bodice across the front so then I can match those together. And this is where I'm going to start pinning. So we want to pin that lovely edge we've just stitched and pressed to the front edge of our bodice. And we've got that centimetre clear there we go, where well, we didn't stitch all the way down, so that makes it much easier to pin. So butt those centre front edges up together. That's the first pin in. Now I'm going to find my side seam. There it is, side seams together. Match those nicely, pop a pin in. And we'll just pop a few more pins in to secure this front waistline. And then we'll find another side seam. There we go, that's the side seam of the skirt and the bodice on the other side. Remember you've got your tie this side, so you want to make sure that's well out of the way of your seam so that you don't stitch it into your waist as you're sewing. There we are, look, pull it out of the way, pull it right down towards the hem of the skirt and then pin the other centre front. There we are, again nicely butted together and easy to pin because you've got that 
three centimetre seam allowance. You can see what you're doing clearly when you start stitching. Let's pop some pins in that front. And then we want to look for our darts. These should match the dart in your bodice, should match the dart in your skirt. And there we go, there's the other one. Match your anchor points. And as I always like to do, I've marked my centre backs with a little snip so that I know that's another point of reference to pin together. There we go. So now we just need to stitch it. Again, centimetre seam allowance. Fold back that facing, get right into that area and stitch it all the way around. There we go, back tack. You can see very clearly that facing's pinned back there. Stitching towards the side seam, make sure again that that tie is well out of the way so you're not stitching it into your seam. And stitch all the way around to the other front. And finish with a back tack. Okay, let's take all these pins out and have a look. Check we haven't caught anything in. No puckers or tucks. Check everything's matching. There we go, that tie is well clear of that seam. Not been caught in anywhere that it wasn't supposed to be. Side seams match. A few little stray threads to chibble away at later. Other side seam. Fabulous, and that's our centre front. So you can see that that will all tuck together nicely. But first we're going to overlock this waist seam. Oh, instantly looks so much nicer, doesn't it, once it's all overlocked. So I'm going to double check there's no tucks and then I'm going to press that seam with the seam allowance pointing up towards the bodice. There you go, you can see it's all pointing upwards. And then I'll be tucking that seam allowance in and giving it a hand stitch. So I'm going to pin it in place first. So this is your facing, you're just tucking the facing up, that bit that we left free and loose. Tucking it up the centimetre seam allowance, pop a pin in and then I'm just going to put a little hand stitch in there. You can bag it out by machine but it's a bit fiddly so there we go. All secured nicely with a little hand stitch. All looks very neat and clean on the inside. Just show you how it looks when it's folded. And I'm placing my button. You'll need to try this on to do this bit because you'll need to know where your button needs to be. So you need to try it on and find out where your loop touches and then you stitch your button to that seam allowance on the waist. So it might be that it comes to the side seam, it might come just a bit further forward, whoops, like tiddlywinks. So that's where I'm going to stitch my button on. And you can see, look, it just threw the seam allowance there. So when I've got it on, a little loop goes over. And you can tie it that side. It's starting to look like a dress, isn't it? Really nice. Just the hems to do now. Here we go for the hems. So I'm just going for the easy option here. I'm just overlocking this sleeve hem and turning it up a centimetre. And 
section for you so you can press it up first tack it if you want to or pin it I'm just going to go for it there we are that's stitched nicely just needs a press and then that's just leave him so pretty much the same for the actual skirt hem I'm just going to overlock it pin it up press it and stitch it turned up a centimeter again you can turn it up as much or as little as you want in some ways it's nicer to do a turn and turn here but I think this light cotton just needs that really, just an overlock and a turn. Give it a press. Lovely quick way to do a hem and it looks nice and neat. And there you have it. A Chichester wrap dress. Yours should look a little bit like this. Enjoy. <laughs>